need to love the people that are starving. There's babies that need formula, there's people that need nappies, there's, there's, medi there's bags with medications and they are even labeled. Like medications and, and they're labeled. I mean, so, why can't we take it up to people that need them? Because right, so, the buildings are quarantined. We're not, we're not going to go up. Why yeah. can't we organize someone who lives in that building to come down and take it up? No, as I said, we're, we're following our directions. Our directions that come through yeah, here. But these directions are starving and hurting our people. That's what, that's what they're doing. I mean, they're impractical, they're inhumane. What do you want us to do? Well, uh, look at this, man. All this building eating the food. That was meant to be a safety mm -hmm. of the people. Look at that. That's what they got us. That's what they wanted us to eat. Over the course of 2020, the people of Victoria have experienced extended stay-at-home orders and other restrictions in the fight against COVID-19. But from July the 4th, one group of Melbournians experienced a lockdown that was different to all others. These people, about 3,000 in total, were residents of high-rise public housing towers. Their lockdown prompted many complaints to my office, and our subsequent investigation received almost 150. My report has now been tabled in the Victorian Parliament. The investigation learned that on the morning of July the 4th, senior health officials agreed the towers needed to be locked down to contain a worrying outbreak of the virus. The officials expected the lockdown to begin the next day, allowing time to plan for food deliveries and other logistics. But at a press conference at 4pm, the Premier announced the lockdown starting immediately. The lockdown was enforced by large numbers of police who were on site before the residents knew or understood what was happening. Many were initially without food, medication and other supports. Residents at eight of the nine towers were detained in their homes for five days. Residents of one tower were detained for a further nine days, waiting more than a week to be allowed outside for supervised access to fresh air. Their stories are deeply distressing. The lockdown successfully stopped the spread of the virus at the towers. But in my opinion, its immediacy was not compatible with the residents' human rights, including the right to humane treatment when deprived of liberty, and therefore appeared to be contrary to Victorian law. This report is not a criticism of the hundreds of public health officials who dealt with the crisis with its huge logistical challenges. Many went above and beyond to support the residents. But the investigation found that the decision to bring forward the operation, which appeared to have been made at a cabinet meeting that afternoon, did not appear to be based on direct health advice. And like the virus it sought to contain, it risked the health and well-being of many people. I've recommended that the Victorian government apologise to the people detained at the public housing estates for the harm and distress caused by the immediacy of their lockdown. This apology would mark an important step in restoring community trust and affirm our commitment to the protection of human rights that are for all of us, whatever our state of health or wealth, wherever we live. On 4 July 2020, hundreds of Victoria Police officers stormed nine inner Melbourne public housing towers of about 3,000 residents to detain them as ordered by the state government. They received no advance notice or explanation of a direction to stay in their often crowded high-rise homes without outside space. Images of their distress flashed on television screens around the world. Four days later, the majority of the nine tower tested negative to COVID-19. In fact, two of the nine towers did not record any cases of the virus. The deputy chief health officer at the time did not recommend a lockdown had to take place immediately, without more time to plan for the inevitable consequences. Yet at 4.08 p.m. the Premier of Victoria, Daniel Andrews, announced the lockdown, effective immediately. People found themselves without food, medication and other essential supports. 
information was confused, incomprehensible, or simply lacking. On the ground few seemed to know who was in charge. No access to fresh air and outdoor exercise was provided for over a week. In a particularly unfortunate act, temporary fencing for an exercise area was erected one night, surrounded by police, and although quickly taken down, it reinforced the residents' sense of being imprisoned. It was degrading and inhumane. Green's MP Ellen Sandal, who was on the ground, took to social media site Twitter to express her concerns, stating, We're still hearing reports of unjust and frankly, racist situations at 33 Alfred Street. Locals tell us white person was allowed to walk dog every day as trial, while African Australian residents aren't let out, supervised daily walks delayed by two days. We're following up. Incidents caught on camera show Victoria Police violently arrest volunteers who were peacefully coordinating food and medication distribution to the residents. Many of them complained of police intimidation and harassment throughout the lockdowns. The Victorian Ombudsman, Deborah Glass, investigated the Nine Towers lockdowns and concluded that it was against human rights. Citing it was not compatible with residents' human rights, including their right to humane treatment when deprived of liberty. In my opinion, based on the evidence gathered by the investigation, the action appeared to be contrary to the law. Ombudsman Glass recommended the Victorian government to at least apologies to the residents for the harm and distress caused by the immediacy of their lockdown and acknowledge the impact it had on their health and well-being. But the Andrews government of Victoria does not agree that the detention of people at the towers was contrary to law or that any human rights were breached. Glass said, the Ombudsman is not a court, and only a court can determine questions of lawfulness. But I can express an opinion based on the evidence gathered by the investigation, and I do so. Documents relating to the lockdown asserted there were security concerns, suggesting the towers were a hotbed of criminality and non-compliance. But the evidence was the vast majority were law-abiding people, just like other Australians. It is unimaginable that such stereotypical assumptions, leading to the theatre of policing that followed, would have accompanied the response to an outbreak of COVID-19 in a luxury apartment block. Glass said there were reports that up to 12 residents in the towers attempted suicide during the lockdowns, but noted that Ambulance Victoria and Victoria Police stated there were no emergency callouts for suicide or attempted suicide during this time. A spokesperson for the Ombudsman's office said a request for documents from the Cabinet meeting, which are subject to privilege, was denied. Glass said her inability to access these documents was frustrating. I'd like to have the information and, you know, people in my position always find it frustrating when we don't have access to the information we'd like to receive. Last year, Victorian Ombudsman Deborah Glass has slammed the state government for not apologising to public housing residents in North Melbourne and Flemington a year after they were suddenly plunged into lockdown in breach of their human rights. News outlets around the world reported hundreds of Victoria police storming the nine buildings to enforce the extreme lockdowns on 3,000 residents across nine towers. They tested all of them for COVID-19 and the majority tested negative, in fact two of the nine towers had zero cases. Many of the residents worked in the healthcare sector and were regularly testing anyways, others relied on casual employment that was placed in jeopardy due to the unannounced lockdowns. When volunteers arrived to provide residents with food, medication and other necessities, they were denied. Some volunteers were filmed being violently arrested. Many residents reported discrimination and racism in the way they were treated by Victoria Police and the Victorian government. A key recommendation from the Ombudsman's investigation, tabled in Parliament last December, was for the Victorian Government to apologise to the Tower residents and acknowledge the impact of their immediate detention, which left many without food, essential medical and other supplies, no access to fresh air and surrounded by police. A public housing resident said an apology wouldn't go far enough. It's pathetic they haven't apologised for it, I've said that through State Premier right to Minister Wynne's office. Buildings that were private rentals across the road weren't locked despite having COVID-19 cases. There should be a compensation mechanism. Two years on today, there has been no apology from the Victorian government. Soon after the Nine Tower lockdowns, footage emerged of mostly white beachgoers roaming St Kilda Beach, many unmasked and don't appear to be following the rules. Around the same time, footage emerged of thousands of white anti-mask protesters filmed bashing police, their horses and damaging public and private property. Some of those offenders were arrested two years later, a few weeks ago. Police were also accused of racial profiling when handing out fines during COVID-19 lockdowns across Victoria. Crime statistics data reveal people of color, particularly indigenous and African backgrounds were over-represented in fines. 
Police had the courtesy of issuing warnings instead of fines but critics say they were mostly reserved for white citizens. There's history of racism claims against Victoria Police by the Flemington and North Melbourne public housing residents. Including when neo-Nazis came to protest their existence by hurling racist abuse and harassing local residents including women, children and the elderly. Residents begged Victoria Police to move them on, but police let them stay. When tempers flared police decided to arrest some of the local residents. <laughs> 